Well, hello, and welcome to this English lesson about using things. I will admit, this is a really bad title for a lesson, an English lesson that's filled with some very common words that you do need to know. I just couldn't think about a good title for what to call it but the other day, I ejected a DVD. Yes, I was still using a DVD player. I ejected a DVD. I put something up. I propped something up. I hooked something up. I stacked some things and I thought all of these words make a good lesson. A lesson, I guess, about describing the actions of using things. Maybe that's a better title. Anyways, welcome to this English lesson. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. We're going to talk about describing using things. Hopefully, that makes sense. Extend. So, when you extend something, it means that it's in a state of either being folded up or wrapped up or rolled up and then extend is when you put it out. On this camper, there is an awning and when the person stopped, they extended the awning, okay? I'm using the past tense. So, when you extend something, it means it kind of goes out. I wouldn't use this for an umbrella like you open an umbrella but you definitely extend an awning. Maybe on your balcony, you have an awning that um, rolls up. There's another word for you and maybe you can crank it. There's another word in order to extend the awning. Um but yes, when you extend something, you move it from a you know packed up state to being out and usable. I do not own a motorhome like this. <laughs> I, I have a tent. I don't I don't have a motorhome. I don't have a camper trailer. Um oh, hey, just a sec. I have to check something here. Um dude, where is Sorry to delay the lesson briefly. I'm kind of a creature of habit. So, if I don't have my Fitbit and my wedding ring on, then I don't feel like I'm ready for my day. So, I had just noticed my wedding ring was off. Retract. Hey, when you go on an airplane, after the airplane takes off, they retract the landing gear. So, retract is actually the opposite of extend. Um they extend the landing gear before they land and then they retract the landing gear. When you retract something, it goes back into the spot where it is stored, okay? So, the wheels on an airplane, they retract into the bottom of the airplane. Um sometimes in movies, they'll have an emergency because the plane, they can't retract the landing gear. The wheels are stuck down and apparently, that's a problem. I don't know a lot about aviation. Stack. So, here's a simple one. There are many things in the world that you can stack. When you stack things, you put one on top of another. At school, uh when we meet as an entire school in the gym, when we're done, we stack the chairs. In order to put the chairs away in the closet where they go, we stack the chairs so they take up less space. There's many things that you can stack. You stack the plates in your cupboard. You might stack cups. You might stack bowls. You can stack spoons um but when you stack things, it's when you put things either inside each other or on top of each other like these chairs here. Insert. So, we all do this. I think I've lost my keys but sometimes you insert your key into the door, into the lock in order to unlock the door. Um this pen has a cap. I can insert the tip of the pen into the cap, okay? Um so, whenever you have a thing that needs to go inside of another thing, the verb we use to describe that action is to insert. When I was a kid, I used to go to the arcade and I would insert coins into the video game machine in order to play the video game. So, when you put things into something else, we often use the verb insert. When I'm frustrated, sometimes I do this. Sometimes I take a piece of paper. What's this piece of paper? It's a comment from another video. If I was done with this piece of paper or if I was frustrated, I might crumple the piece of paper. So, this piece of paper is now crumpled. I might crumple it before I throw it into the recycle bin. 
Um, you can just put paper in the recycle bin flat but sometimes it's more fun to crumple the paper and then throw it. Students really like doing that. They like to crumple the paper and they like to throw it into the recycle bin or at each other. So, this is how this lesson uh came to be. I was using a DVD player which is rare. <laughs> Often uh in this world you just watch something on your computer but uh I have an older movie that I show in French class and I needed to play it from a DVD player. So, I put the DVD in and then when I was done I hit the eject button and I ejected. Sorry, I said eject. We actually it's a, it's not a long e. It's eject. I hit the eject button. Don't say eject. That's wrong. I try not to say words wrong. Hit the eject button and then the DVD came out of the DVD player. So, when you have when I was a kid um we could play cassette tapes in the radio in our car and then if you hit eject it would come out. So, it's the button you push to make something come out. Um I'm trying to think if there's a modern day. Oh, yeah. Sometimes on a computer if you are done using something you right click and eject it. So, it's like a safe way to remove an SD card or something like that. Rearrange. Do you ever get a little bit bored of a room in your house? Like do you ever look at it and think, oh, I should put that chair over there and I should move that uh file cabinet over there. We call this rearranging. When you rearrange a room, you put things in different spots. Maybe uh you look at your kitchen counter and you think, oh, I should put the toaster over there and I should put the microwave over there and then maybe I'll move the coffee maker beside the sink. I think I'm going to rearrange the things on my counter. So, when you rearrange, you put things either in a room or on a counter or on a shelf. You put things in different spots. You rearrange. It's good to do that. I think a lot of Canadians do that in the middle of the winter because we're in our houses so much. Eventually, we think, hmm, I should rearrange some things here. Clamp. So, I think I talked about this verb in another lesson um but in this lesson, I wanna talk about things like this light. This person bought a light that they could clamp onto their desk. If you look at the bottom there where the light is connected to the desk, I think it slid on and there's probably something to turn. This is my clamp. So, as I turn, the clamp gets tighter, okay? Um when I was in university, I had a lamp that would clamp onto my I had it on the headboard of my bed so I could read at night. I'm trying to think if I have other things right now. Oh, I have a mic that clamps on to my uh tripod. Uh that's another use of the verb clamp but it simply means to attach something with something we call a clamp, something that has a spring or something that you turn and tighten. Hook up. So, I think we talked about that these are called hitches. There's a hitch that you use to hook up. So, my son has a truck and a trailer. When he comes to get his trailer, he hooks up his trailer. When you hook something up, usually we're talking about cars and trailers or tractors and wagons. You hook one up to the other. If you see a large transport truck on the road, it has a trailer. When he goes to the yard, he might unhook the trailer and then hook up the trailer, okay? So, it's when you connect something to something else used primarily to talk about vehicles although yeah, you can hook up equipment too. Um and you might be wondering why not just use the word hook? We don't. You you always hook up a trailer. Um let me see. I'm gonna hook a trailer to my car. Yeah, you can say that but I would say hook up is probably more common. Um we have rip off and tear off. You've probably seen posters like this around your town sometimes. Even though people usually sell things on the internet, you might still see these. It might say like concert this week. Um free concert and then down here, they'll have the address or this guy is selling a driveway cleaning service. So, he might have little pieces of paper that you can rip off or tear off. So, if you're like, oh, I need my driveway clean. 
you might tear off his name and phone number so that you can give that person a call and they can come and do that for you. Um to pin. So, if you have a bulletin board or if you have a cork board and you have um pins or push pins, you might pin something to the board. If you use Pinterest online, you might pin something to your Pinterest uh board as well. But we have these in our classrooms. We have a board in our kitchen and if there's something important, we will pin it to the board so that we will remember it. I think right now, my next dentist appointment is pinned to the board in our kitchen. So, that way, I can see it when I walk by and hopefully not forget to go. Fold up. Uh we have tables where the legs will fold and so, we set the table up but when we're done, we fold up the table. When we go to market, we have folding tables that you can. So, we don't often unfold the table just so you know. We would set up the table and then at the end of market, we would fold up the table. The legs fold into the bottom. The table itself actually folds in half and then you have a nice compact way to carry it. So, again, if you have folding tables, you would set up the table. When you're done using it, you would fold up the table and you would put it away. Unfold. So, we don't have strollers anymore but we used to. Uh often when you have a stroller, it will fold up and then you can unfold it. So, notice with the table, I didn't use unfold and I wouldn't. It sounds like a strange way but with a stroller, you know, the little thing you push your kid or baby around in, I would use unfold. You fold up the stroller and put it in your car and then you take it out and unfold it. So, when something is, you know, in a smaller form and it's designed to kind of do this, we would use the verb unfold. You would unfold the stroller. I don't miss folding and unfolding strollers. That was our I think the newer ones work better but uh definitely uh yeah. You know what I don't I miss having little kids because it was a lot of fun having little kids but I don't miss all of the stuff like the diaper bag and the stroller and everything you had to carry with you just to go somewhere. That was a little bit cumbersome. Prop up. So, this is I think it's a Microsoft Surface and you can see that you see the little back part that's out holding up the screen. Let me see if I can mimic this. I can't get my angles right. So, the part that's holding up the screen at the back, we would say that you're using that to prop up the laptop. Anytime you use something to kind of hold something else up a little bit, We use the verb to prop up. You can use prop as well but prop up is probably more common. If your fence was falling over in the backyard, you might push it straight and then put a board to prop up the fence. So, it's something you use to hold something else up. Often when I sit down at the kitchen table at lunch, I might set down my phone and I might use a book to prop up my phone so that it's so I can see it, right? So, you might have your phone and if you lay it flat, it's hard to see but if you um like I could put my pen under to prop it up on the table and then I can see it to prop up. To put up. So, this is a pretty general use verb. Um you can put up blinds. You can put up curtains. You can uh put up things on your walls. You can put things up on shelves. So, anytime you're putting something up. That's not a good way to define it. Anytime you're attaching something to the wall um or you're uh doing what this person's doing, you know, reaching up to hang something, we the general term would be to put up. You can put up wallpaper. Um you wouldn't put up paint. That doesn't make sense. Um but you can uh put your groceries up on the top shelf right? You can put up curtains. You can put up blinds etcetera etcetera. I think I'm repeating myself on put up. Take down. Kind of the opposite of put up. Oh, by the way, you can put up a tent as well. 
This guy I think is going to take down the tent um but when he got to the campground, I'm pretty sure that he would have put up his tent. You can use setup as well with the tent but when you're done camping, you take down your tent. So, a tent when it's up can collapse and fold and you can roll it up. The whole all of those actions we would use the verb to take down. So, not the funnest part of camping but when you're done camping, you will take down your tent. Um and again, you can use this for things on the wall. I'm gonna take down that painting. Um I'm gonna put up some posters or I'm gonna take down my posters before I move out. So, the action of putting things up and down. Unfurl. Not used a lot anymore. You can unfurl a sail. You can unfurl a flag as well. So, when you have something like a fabric that's rolled up, you can unfurl it. And I think those are probably like when you pull the cord on a parachute, the parachute will unfurl above you. You might use it then but definitely, you would use it if you go on a little sailing adventure. You would unfurl the sail. So, the sail's rolled up. You would unfurl it before you go. I'm trying to think of another thing that you might unfurl. Yeah. Basically, any kind of fabric that's rolled up, if you unroll it, you might use the verb unfurl. Let's see here. Collapse. So, some things are meant to collapse. This this verb has a lot of meanings but when you do the action of collapsing something, it means that you are putting it into a smaller form. We have dog crates and we can collapse them. They're built so that if we want to um put them flat, you can collapse it. Um I'm trying to think of another example. Um some people have I'm trying to think. Like at market when we're done using our canopy, sometimes we say it's time to take down the canopy but sometimes we just say let's collapse the canopy. So, it's to make something into a smaller form. Wind up. When you're done using an extension cord, uh it's always a good idea to wind up the cord. Now, notice this looks a lot like the word wind. So, it's one of those words that has two meanings and two pronunciations but when I'm done doing my live stream outside on Saturdays, I wind up my network cable and then I wind up my extension cord um because believe it or not, I do have to use electricity out there. I think I got that fly. Not a hundred percent sure. Um you do like it when I just do normal English speaking life things like try to swat flies. This is a fly swatter. You use it to swat. That wasn't part of the lesson but now you know. I tried to swat a fly. I think I missed it but anyways. To unwind. Well, the opposite of wind is to unwind. When you go to use your garden hose, if it is wound up like this, you pull it and it will unwind as you pull it. When you're flying a kite, as the kite goes higher, the string will unwind as you're flying the kite. Uh and then same with an extension cord. You will if I needed to vacuum my van, I would unwind an extension cord um in order to have electricity by my van. Crank. Some windows slide open. This is actually a patio door but some have a little crank. I should have zoomed in a little bit more on this. When you crank, there's usually like a little handle or lever on something and you turn it. These windows here, when I do my live stream, I unlatch the latches and then I crank the thing and then the window opens and then I throw my extension cord out the window. Um so, when you crank something, it means you turn it. Back to the beginning of the lesson, when you extend an awning, you probably crank something. There's probably like a little thing that you crank and then the awning will extend. So, to crank means to turn something with a little handle. We also use this to talk about like extreme turning with a steering wheel like you crank the wheel. Sometimes when you're driving, if something like let's say a dog runs out in front of you, you might crank the wheel so that you don't have an accident. Slide. 
Isn't that weird? Let's get back to the slides and then the word is slide. So, these are slides. When you have a PowerPoint, you have slides um but you can also slide a door open. In uh my part of Canada, we call this a patio door. So, a patio door is like a large window but it can slide open and you can go in and out. So, often people will have a patio door that exits onto their patio or their deck. So, this person is using their patio door. They are sliding open. They've decided to slide open the door so that they can go outside. Yeah, we don't have a patio door. Um my parents built this house and I think when they built the house in the early eighties, patio doors weren't very energy efficient. So, we put in normal doors. The back of my house has a normal door. Zip and unzip. So, when you have something on that has a zipper, you can zip up or zip the zipper. When I put on my jacket, I can zip up the zipper or I can zip the zipper. Uh and then when I take it off, I unzip the zipper. Same with button. You can button up and unbutton a shirt. Uh same usage. Same way you can use it. Same way. You can use it in the same way. There we go. Uh spin. So, I don't know if you've ever done this but uh in the spring when I get my kids bikes ready to use, I will put them upside down and I will spin the tire just to make sure that it spins properly. I'll make sure the tire is straight. I will put a little bit of oil on the chain um and so, when you spin something, it's something that can turn and you've actively decided to make it turn. So, you can turn a bike upside down and spin the tire. Um let's see. What else can you spin? We have a game at school where you can spin the wheel and then it clicks and then you can win a prize. We use that in our classrooms sometimes. To box up and to unbox. So, if you move, you need to box up your stuff. You could say, I need to move. I need to put my stuff in boxes but most often people will say, ah, I have to help my brother move this weekend. I'm gonna go help him box up all his stuff. You could say, I'm going to go help him put all his stuff in boxes but that just seems like a long way to say to box up. When you move, you get a whole bunch of boxes. You box up your stuff. You can also say, pack up your stuff um and then you move to your new place. When you get there, you unbox all your stuff or you unpack all your stuff. Unbox has become a popular word on the internet though. You might have watched channels where they unbox things or they might unbox um what's the big channel? Oh, Unbox Therapy. He's Canadian by the way. Unbox Therapy is a channel where he will unbox things. So, he gets new things and the act of opening and taking the thing out of the box is called unboxing. Um I kinda like those YouTube channels where they unbox stuff. Um maybe I should start unboxing things. Keep forgetting. Whenever I talk about this, I always forget. I want anyways, I'll I'll talk about it's a it's a secret. There. I'll tell you another time. To tighten, to loosen. So, when you tighten something, usually it's something like a bolt and nut. So, the bolt is the long piece. The nut is right here and you would use a wrench to tighten that nut. When I use my tripod, I tighten like if I move like if I do this, I can loosen. You can't see what I'm doing but I can loosen this and then put it in a different spot and then tighten it. So, there's a little handle and I can loosen it and then I can move the camera up and down and then when it's in the right spot, I can tighten it. So, whenever you do that um and I don't know if I've taught you this before. In English, we always say righty tighty, lefty loosey. So, (laughs) it's kind of a funny little thing but what that means is if you turn something to the right, okay, it will get tighter. If you turn something to the left, it will get looser. So, righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's what that's how you remember which way to turn something. To wrap, Christmas is coming. Still a few months away. We will wrap a lot of presents when Christmas arrives so that our kids can uh, open those presents but uh when you wrap something, you put something around it. 
Maybe you make a sandwich in the morning and you wrap it in plastic wrap. Um maybe let me see another use of wrap. Wrap things. Yeah, those are probably the two biggest ones. You wrap a present. You can wrap your sandwich. I don't use plastic wrap on my sandwiches. If I make a lunch, I have a little reusable uh container that I take to school. But yes, when I was a kid, my mom would wrap my sandwiches in wax paper, I think. Then I would eat them at school. She, <laughs> plunge. Sometimes the toilet won't flush. Sometimes you need to unclog the toilet or you need to plunge the toilet. This thing that this person has is called a plunger. It uses you use it to kind of force air through the bottom of the toilet and that will unclog the toilet. So, someone might say, oh, the toilet upstairs isn't flushing. We need to plunge the toilet. So, unclog or plunge both words you can use and again, that is a plunger. Um you probably learned about that in my lesson on everyday items from a couple years ago. That was that was a while ago. To measure. So, when you want to build things, when you want to um put up curtains, when you want to put up blinds, you first you want to measure. You want to know how many centimeters wide is my window? How many inches is the window? Um if I was to buy new curtains for this room, I would want to measure the windows before I go and buy them. Um let me see something else you might measure. Um yeah, if you were going to build something out of wood, you would certainly measure things before you built them. Um but for sure, you uh use a tape measure or you use a ruler. I don't have a ruler here. This is a tape measure. You use a tape measure to measure things. Um or you might use a ruler which will be 30 centimeters long usually in Canada. Usually a ruler in Canada is 12 inches long on one side and 30 centimeters long on the other side. It's the same length by the way or almost the same length. But you would use that to measure things. 